Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and I have to be honest with everyone. I cheated a little bit in one of the previous tutorials I did. When I say I cheated a little bit, what I'm referring to is I'm referring to the Rocky tutorial that I did showing you how to add footage in behind a title to create something similar to the Rocky effect, you know, where you have the, you know, giant letters scrolling across the screen with image moving images inside of that text. Now, the reason I say I cheated was because I only used one image. But what if we wanted to get in and get even more, you know, sort of complicated, you know, take it a little bit further than what we had before and add in a different image behind each one of the letters. How would we actually go about doing that? Well, I thought in this lesson, because I get a lot of requests for a little bit more complicated tutorials, I thought in this lesson we take a look at a little bit of advanced titling inside of Media Composer and Symphony, and we're going to take a look at how to create a complex Rocky effect inside of Media Composer and Symphony. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's alt tab into Avid's Symphony, obviously a command tab for all of my Mac friends out there. First thing we're going to need is a title to work with. I'm going to navigate up to clip. We'll come down to new title. Of course, we're going to be doing the standard title tool and I'm just going to type in appropriately enough Rocky. We're going to take my favorite font here, Impact. There we go. I'll put the size at maybe about, I don't know, 275. We'll see if that's too big. Might be too big here. We might have to shrink that back down here. Uh, you know what? That's not too bad. I think what I'm going to do is just adjust the kerning to be about 10. So let's bring this right back here because I want to have a little bit of space between the letters. That, those letters are a little bit fat. That's a little bit better there. Very nice. Okay. So what I'm going to do is simply say File, Save Title As. We'll call this, of course, Rocky. Make sure we spell this correctly here. There we go, Rocky. We'll just stick it into our sequences bin. Now, you remember from the previous quick tip, when I did this, what I basically did was I took the Rocky effect, what we're going to do, or the Rocky title. We're just going to create about a seven second long clip here. And what I basically did was, was that I stepped into the title. And once I stepped into the title, you'll remember from the quick tip that what we have in here is two elements. We have the alpha mat that we're looking at right now which is actually not correct. You'll see that it's actually flipped. And that's something to keep in mind when working in Media Composer and Symphony. You'll see that the matte key doesn't look the way that it should. What's actually happening here is the black is what is going to be cut out instead of the white. So keep that in mind. And you'll see that if I select the fill layer, it's going to be filled or what's going to be behind that cutout is this white text. Now what we did in the, in the quick tip, and I'm just going to come back to my time lapse footage here, was I took, let's just say a shot of something similar to this. I'm going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. I'm going to edit this into the graphics fill layer. Now you'll see that this kind of gives me what I want if I step out. Now obviously I could get in and adjust that. But here's the problem I ran into. What's going to happen if I want to actually add an element behind each one of these letters? Well, most people immediately say After Effects, After Effects, After Effects, and I say stop. Don't get me wrong, love After Effects don't need to leave Media Composer or Symphony to do that effect. We're going to use the 3D Warp tool and a little bit of creative genius here to create that effect. Now you're going to see what happens when I step back into the title. If I try to create a new layer inside of this title or inside this effect, I'm immediately told, well, hold on a second. The real-time title and matte effects are limited to an RGB and an alpha track only. So what that's saying is I can only have one layer inside of this title. Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to undo what I just did here to put things back the way it was. Very nice. And what we're going to do is we're going to add five layers of video outside of the title. One layer of video for each element that we have here. So let's do that. Let's go control Y. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five. Very cool. And we're just going to come up to video layer two. And let's just select a time-lapse shot here, something that's remotely interesting here. This is not too bad. Okay, so we're going to use this shot over top of the R. Actually, what's going to be, the R is going to be cutting this shot out here. So let's just select the entire clip here, hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. I'm going to hit B to edit this shot in. What we're going to do now is we're going to go into the effects palette, so Control and 8 on a Windows command and 8 on the Mac, and we're going to select the standard 3D warp tool. I'm going to take the 3D warp tool, 
I'm going to drag it and drop it onto the shot. We're going to step into effects mode. Again, my shortcut for effects mode, shift and Y. If you don't have effects mode mapped to your keyboard, no problem. You can simply find it right here, or you can simply find it right here. So effects mode, there we go. And all we're going to do is we're just going to crop this up a little bit here, probably to about, oh, I don't know. We just want to sort of have all, have all this traffic whizzing by. That's not too bad. And we're going to take this and we're just going to position it kind of about here. Now, it's obviously a little bit too wide. Now, you'll see that I lost my handle for my crop for the right side. Now, what most people will do is they'll move this like this. They'll adjust it. They'll move it back. But you don't need to do any of that. What we're going to do is position this on the left side, roughly where we're going to want it. And inside the effect editor, I'm simply going to zoom back on the canvas. And now I can see exactly what I am doing. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with that right there. What I can do is step out, just hit play. I more so just want all these cars whizzing by inside of the R. Okay, let's do the same thing for the O. Let's just find a shot. That's looking pretty nice. We're going to sort of have this theme going at night with all of these cars. So let's just select this. And what most people would think that I would do in this case is I would go through and rebuild that entire thing again, but I'm not going to do that. All I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to come to Video Track 2, again, step into Effects Mode, Shift and Y is my shortcut. I'm just going to zoom back in here just so I can see exactly what's going on. And I'm simply going to take the effect and I'm going to drag it and drop it right down onto the next layer of video. Now, of course, what it's going to do, it's going to crop everything and position it. I have it positioned now. I'm just going to double click again just so I can collapse everything back down. But you'll see it's actually giving me what I want. Now all I have to do is simply just slide this over here. There we go. Now you'll see, of course, this line represents that there's an animation happening here. So again, let's just delete this keyframe here just so that we don't have an animation. We want to make sure that these are separate from each other as well. There we go. Very nice. So we got this sort of night traffic theme going on. So why don't we just keep it going? Let's find another shot here. Sort of night traffic, that's looking pretty nice. Now, this shot is only four seconds long. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double this up a little bit here. So what I'm going to do, again, hit T on the keyboard, both Mac and Windows. Let's come back here. I'm just going to mark an endpoint. We're going to hit B to edit this into our timeline. And like I said, what we're going to do, again, exactly the same thing, Shift and Y. We're going to take the 3D warp, drag it and drop it right down onto this shot. Let's make sure we're monitoring that layer. Very nice. Okay. Now, again, what we're going to do is simply slide this over. Now, we just want to make sure that we delete all these keyframes. We don't have any rogue keyframes coming around here. Let's just make sure I only have one keyframe on this side here. And one keyframe. Very nice. Okay. So, let's come back to this one keyframe. And again, we're just going to slide everything over here this way. Very cool. Again, we don't want to have any animations. So let's just check out what's going on here. You'll see. Oh, we got a bit of a jump happening here. Not what we want. Let's just delete this here. And what we're going to do is just delete all these keyframes altogether. There we go. So that way when we slide things over, just like such, it'll add a keyframe, but nothing's going to jump around. Very cool. If you're ever in doubt, always just get rid of all the keyframes that you have there. Because in this case, I don't want to be creating animation, so I don't really even need a keyframe. So this keyframe here, once I have things positioned where I want, I can even just say, you know what, go away. I don't need you here because I don't want to have any confusion down the road. Now, like I said, all we're going to do is actually just loop this clip here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Control and Alt on Windows, Command and Option on the Mac. And actually, I believe all you have to do is actually hold Alt uh, on Windows, Option on the Mac, and hit the C key, C for copy in this case, to the clipboard, which is our preview window. So once I have this element inside the preview window, which is essentially the exact same element that I have in my timeline, all I'm going to do is come right down here and just edit this back into the timeline. Now, of course, it's going to loop a bit, but I don't think you're really even going to notice. I didn't even notice that, so I think that's going to work out good. Okay, let's find a couple more night shots here. That's a day shot. This is actually kind of nice with the streaking lights going past the screen here. Very cool. So again, T on the keyboard, new layer. Let's hit B to edit that in. We'll just pick one of our other layers with the effects here. We'll just take 3D Warp, drag it and drop it. Now, of course, you might need some adjustment, but in this case, there's the light streaking by. It's kind of hard to see until I play it, but there we go. Very cool. So again, Shift and Y to get into effects mode. 
we'll come back to where that keyframe is. And we're going to take this and just slide it right over top of the K. Very cool. Okay, so we're only going to need one more element here. So let's see, do we have another night shot? I think we just found it. So again, T on the keyboard. We're going to mark that clip, drop it into our timeline. Again, exactly the same thing we just did. Take 3D Warp, drag it and drop it. You'll see there is the clip there. Let's just hit play. Very nice. Again, Shift and Y on our topmost clip. Just going to drag this over. You'll see that I obviously was not on top of that keyframe. That's why I said we need to get rid of all of these pesky keyframes. And you'll see that basically what I have now when I step out of effects mode is I have five panels. Now, it doesn't even really matter if you leave black in between. You can have them all butt-ended up against each other because really it's the alpha information that's going to come in and cut all of these different clips out. So let me show you how this is going to work. You're going to remember that I told you inside the Rocky effect that you can't get in and add more than one layer of video. Well, that's true. But... One layer of video could also be a collapse. You'll remember we talked about collapses a couple tutorials ago. So all I'm going to do again is I'm just going to select all the layers of video that I'm going to want to collapse. And in this case, I'm just going to hit collapse. There it is right there. Again, T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. Alt and C on Windows, Option and C on the Mac to copy this into our clipboard. What we're going to do now is remove it from our timeline by simply hitting the Lift key, which is Z on the keyboard. Remember, I'm Canadian, so I say Z and not Z. That's Z on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. Let's step into our Rocky title, and let's just select the entire fill layer and paste in our uh, sort of our Venetian blind look here. And what's going to happen as soon as I step out is the alpha information is going to kick in, and it's going to cut out each one of those elements separately. So when I play it back, I now have a different clip in each one of the letters. Most people might consider this to be a very complex effect, but you'll see with a little bit of forward thought and the 3D warp tool inside a Media Composer and Symphony, what might be a very complex effect is done very easily. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.